bonsoir. My name is Robert Tyson Hauser, and in addition to the videos I have on this channel uh, showing houses and apartments that I have to rent or to sell in Paris, I want to do this little series uh, explaining uh, buying a place in Paris. We'll also talk about renting and maybe some searches, but I want to concentrate on buying for those that might consider, might want to live in Paris one day, and I want to demystify the whole process, make it a little bit less scary. So about, I don't know how many years ago, it was a few years back in the summer one evening, I was sitting at about this very spot on this bench uh, when one of the many Paris bicycle tours came swooshing through this courtyard. And as they, as they rode through the courtyard, I heard the tour guide yell out, Cour Carré, Square Courtyard, before they just kept going. They didn't even stop. They just kept going and disappeared into the night. And I remember thinking, wow. I am so glad I didn't pay for that bike tour because I don't really feel that they were getting their money's worth. Because had that tour guide stopped for just a couple minutes, he could have pointed out to those lovely tourists that the, this, this courtyard is one of the oldest parts of the Louvre. It reflects the early French Renaissance. So what does that mean? It means basically that the, the Renaissance had already begun, begun 100 years earlier in uh, Italy, and it was just catching on in the rest of Europe and starting here in France in the late 15th, early 16th century. And uh, so they're basically, the French are copying the Italians with this courtyard. Uh, they're copying a more elaborate, ornate Italian style before they graduate later into the more sober, simple neoclassical French style that we know uh, uh, later on in the 18th century. It was kind of the height of the French architecture period for a lot of people. So then, had he just taken, that's just one minute, had he taken one or two minutes more, uh, he could have uh, pointed out what's just up behind me, uh, a pair of initials actually carved into the wall. They give a whole window into a piece of French history, intrigue at the court, love and deception, marriage. And that has to do with these, these initials back here because the background story is that uh, Francois, Francois I started, building, started the construction of this part of the Louvre and it was finished by his son, Henry II. Now, Henry II was married to Catherine of Medici, Catherine de Medicis, who has kind of a bad reputation. Um, but the great love of his life was Diane of Poitiers, Poitiers, Diane de Poitiers, Diane of Poitiers. And Diana Poitiers was what they called at the time an accepted court mistress. She was the court mistress to the king. And the mistress to the king held great power, actually, more power than the, king, than the queen herself, because the court mistress had the king's ear at certain special moments that, I, that I'm sure you can guess what those are. During this period, he had Catherine as his, as his wife, Diane as his mistress, and he finished embellishing this courtyard. So if you want to look just behind me here, you can see the initials. Um, it looks to me like an H and a D. H for Henry, D for Diane. But apparently Henry at the time said that it was a C. Uh, so it could be a C. It could be. It's hard to say. But, um, but I, I'll kind of let you be the judge of that because, uh, you know, for me it looks like a D. You might want to call it a C. But in any case, it wasn't very nice for poor Catherine who bore... Henry II, 10 children, and then after his gruesome, unti untimely death, took over running the French, the French state during religious wars no nonetheless, and watched her children, her sons, ascend to the throne one by one, only to die later. It's kind of a tough story, but you know what? Catherine, she was a tough lady, and she, she, she took it all with a stiff upper lip. She was, and that's maybe where she gets her bad reputation. That being said, you can imagine the first thing she did after uh, after the king died was banish poor Diane from Paris, from court forever. She never came back and it's uh, apparently she died in the country, in her country house alone, which is kind of sad. They say that Diane wasn't such a nice lady either. I mean, I'll let you read history books for that. But you might be asking me, Tyson, what does this have to do with real estate, with Paris real estate? Well, I guess the thing is, is, uh, it has everything to do with Paris real estate for me because these little pieces of beauty interwoven with history, with the human experience, this is what makes Paris what it is today. This is, this is what makes Paris such a desirable place to live. And so for people that have been to Paris once, twice, three times, they might have what, they, what I call the Paris bug. It means they might want to move to Paris at some point. They're playing with the idea, but it seems like such a fantasy. But like I said, I'm here to de demystify that. And I wanted to talk a little bit more about sales, buying a place in Paris. Um, because it's only through living here 
that these little pieces of Paris and Paris history and its architecture become evident and that Paris reveals her secrets, if you will. So whether you want to come, you know, write, it, write that novel, find love, maybe come here and live with your family, why not? Because Paris actually has, actually has an excellent healthcare system, as you know, and has an excellent education system, great schools. But whatever be your reason for coming here, I want to talk about sales a little bit today and then in the other episodes, rentals. So the question might be, is Paris a good investment. You know, we've had a lot of social upheaval, upheaval here, upheaval part on here lately. And uh, what with the gilets jaunes, the yellow jackets, what with COVID, which is still going on. Actually, I should be wearing my mask, but not for this episode. And, you know, we had big dips in the economy in 2009, 2013. Is Paris a good investment? The answer is a resounding Yes. And so that's good news for people like me and for those that are thinking of coming to Paris and don't want to lose money on that investment. Why is Paris a good investment? So I've done lots of research on the subject. Uh, one of the best um, studies I found was by La Salle Investment. And I also did, consulted other periodicals. By all means, if you want to do your own research, go ahead. Or you can take my, my, my word for it. But I, I encourage you, if you want to take a look, to, to, to you know, be sure that it is a good investment. By all means, take a look. So what is, why is Paris such a good investment? Well, Paris has a stock of, uh, of, real, of residential real estate, old residential real estate, unlike any other comparable capital in the world. That's the first, that's the first and big, big reason. There's a lot of beautiful old architecture in Paris, a lot of beautiful old apartments, a lot of beautiful stock of products, if you want to talk, it, talk about it in an investment way. And that makes uh, that Paris always has more uh, demands than offers. It's simple economics. There's less offer and more demand, so the market stays steady throughout all these different upheavals and changes in the world, actually. And you know what? Paris doesn't want to change that. Uh, regulations keep uh, new construction, uh, well, basically don't let very much new construction be had in most of Paris, and especially in the best neighborhoods. So this is another underpinning uh, reason for it being a good investment. From there, uh, Paris is a lot cheaper than other major uh, comparable capitals. Now, what am I talking about when I talk about comparable capitals? Uh, uh, capital cities or comparable cities to Paris. They're not a lot because Paris is a very international cosmopolitan city. So we're comparing it to New York, London, Hong Kong, Tokyo. Well, obviously Hong Kong and Tokyo don't have a stock of old, uh, of old architecture, but uh, New York has some and London even more, but still Paris has a much uh, a, a larger amount. But even at that, there's more demand than there is an offer. So LaSalle also go goes on to explain, and other periodicals go on to explain, that Paris has a much lower price point. It's cheaper than these other major, uh, major cities. So that just another reason. And if you don't want to rent it, I can help you. If you want to buy a place and rent it, live there half a year, I can help you with that. But if you don't want to rent it, no problem. It's still a really good investment because maintenance costs are really low in France, in Paris rather, in France in general and in Paris. Um, I have a, you'll see on my, on my channel that I have a 2.2 million euro house uh, currently for sale. That house, uh, the property taxes on it are just over 2,000 euros a year. This is unheard of. For any of you, my friends who are New Yorkers, they just can't believe it. The monthly charges on that house are only 300 euros a month. Now, the house is 1,600 square feet, 160 square meters with tons of terrace space. I have a friend that has one third of that in the Lower East Side of New York, and he pays $800 a month, 700, 700 euros a month equivalent. And I won't even talk about his property taxes. You've got state taxes and uh, federal taxes in New York. It, it, it adds up very quickly. So these are things, uh, I'll also look at taxes and that kind of thing in France later and, and buying here, but then again, that's for other, other episodes. So what, why is Paris such a good investment? Why is it a solid investment? Uh, LaSalle also did a, um, a study of the Paris market, and the Paris market over the last 40 years has had a constant and continual capital gains. Again, through all these upheavals, through all, for economics, dips and lows, maybe there's a little bit of dip, but it's not a huge fall and a huge mount. It just has a very steady, good capital gains. And so what does that make for? That makes for, I learned this expression in the, in the, in the investment world, it makes for a good real asset, which meaning a good real estate asset. And it's also a good way for you 
to protect yourself from inflation. So buy a place in Paris, enjoy your life here, and you, you protect your cash from inflation, and it's a very solid investment. It doesn't have the fluctuations of the stock market and that side of thing, that kind of thing. So all these reasons come, uh, come to a head, and for this resounding yes, that yes, Paris is a great investment. Uh, it's a good place to buy. It's a, in, so in addition to it being a wonderful place to live, now, so we're going to go into more statistics. I hope I won't bore you with that, and then we're going to finish up. So uh, Paris, uh, in the last years, has consistently come in the top three European cities for investment. Now, I'm sure you've seen many times over that Paris is a wonderful place to live. It often gets ranked in the top cities to live in the world for lifestyle. We've got culture, we've got food, we've got shopping, we've got you know culture including expos. You've got this beautiful architecture if you just want to take a walk in the city along the river. There's lots of green space around Paris. There, it's just two hours from the sea if you want to take a drive and do the weekend in the sea in Normandy. But so in addition to it being Again, one of the top cities for living in the world. It's also in the top three and often in the top two for the best investments in, um, in Europe. And why are these? Why are these? I just have a few statistics for you there. Why is it a good investment? So this, these last statistics are the following. Uh, there's, Paris has the largest concentration of multinational corporations of any other city in Europe. And connected to that, uh, when the study was done, and the study was done a few years ago, 49 of the top 500 uh, Fortune 500 country companies were based in Paris, had their base in Paris. And since that, that study was done, more have actually come to Paris because of Brexit. So in addition to the 49, some have already left London because of Brexit to also uh, establish themselves and their, uh, their uh, business center in Paris. Also, Paris is the Paris region is one of the is the best is the has the highest concentration of research and development of anywhere else in Europe and of anywhere in Russia. So that's another reason that keeps the keeps the concentration of economic strength in Paris and keeps the prices high, keeps them steady, keeps it a steady city to live in. So you've got uh, R and D, uh, research and development, uh, multinational companies. Uh, Fortune 500 companies. And you, it's also got a very good uh, array of very up and coming. The French are very innovative. So you have a lot of innovative new countries and uh, companies and startups in Paris. Remember the TGV was developed here. The TGV is the train à grande vitesse. It's the fast train that goes 300 miles an hour that where it took five, five hours to get to Bordeaux before, it now only takes one and a half to two. Where it used to take me four hours to get to Brussels, now it takes an hour and a half to two. So that's just one example of French innovation. So there's a lot of R&D here, there's a lot of innovative countries, and in addition to that, because it's a social country, they have a lot of uh, public uh, research and development centers like the, uh, the research for the sciences, atomic research, and what's the other one? Uh, atomic uh, uh, and um, uh, atomic science, and there's another one. Anyhow, there's, a, there's another social, it's a government-funded uh, uh, research and development center that's very big and very well-renowned and respected in Paris. All these, all these reasons push Paris to be a very major uh, you know, international capital, but also a very good investment and a solid economy. Last thing, and this is the case with most large cities and smaller countries, uh, the 12 million uh, people in Paris itself uh, creates uh, one third of the economic output of the entire country. So in this little, in this very concentrated area, there's 12 million people just cranking out a lot of, a lot of uh, development. So all that to say that if you're thinking of moving to Paris and you hesitate because of financial reasons, uh, you don't have to do that. So this is just the beginning of the series. Like I said, this is just a, an introduction. Uh, I will follow with more information. I highly, you know, if there's anything you'd like to know about buying, renting, that sort of thing in Paris, put it down below. Ask me questions. I might integrate your questions into the video. I might do a whole video on the subject. If, and so, so don't hesitate to talk to me. Tell me what you'd like to know and I'll try to integrate in future videos. So thank you very much for your time and for your interest and I look forward to talking to you very soon.